one of the most enigmatic but emblematic episodes in the Torah is the story of Yaakov Avinu wrestling with the angel. Enigmatic because there is so much that we don't know. Was it a real struggle or a prophetic vision? Was Yaakov alone because he had gone back to collect forgotten vessels? Or was he trying to escape into the night? And who were these mysterious figures? Was the guardian, was it the guardian angel of Esav or the protective angel, Gavriel? And these are just some of the questions addressed by Chazal. And yet this story is also emblematic of the rise, not only of our forefather Yaakov from victim to victor, but of the future glory of his children, the Jewish people, from a persecuted mass to a priestly nation. And while we know all of the basic outline of this story, today, I want you to consider its outcome. The fact that when the battle and the subsequent blessing were complete, Yaakov Avinu left the scene vutzolea al yerecho, wounded and limping. Presumably, that's the way that he went to meet his brother Esav, how he greeted him bearing gifts and with the prayers and the preparedness, if necessary, for war. But then, right afterward, the Torah reports, Ve'yavoy Akov Shalem, Ir Shechem, that Yaakov arrived Shalem, intact, to the city of Shechem. As the Gemara explains, that miraculously, Yaakov was Shalem Begufo, physically perfect, healed from his disability. Shalem Bemamonom, financially intact despite the many gifts he gave to Esav. And Shalem Betorato, complete in his Torah, having forgotten nothing from the, all that he had learned over the past 20 years with Lavan, which from the perspective of the Pshat suggests that Yaakov arrived in Shechem prepared to move forward, putting his struggles with Lavan and Esav completely behind him, or at least that's the way we usually understand this chain of events. But today I want to suggest an alternative explanation. One that is most assuredly not the pshat, but which one which I believe contains a great and powerful truth of human existence that perhaps when Yaakov Avinu arrived in Shechem, he was still limping, still wounded, and still in pain. And that's the real reason Yaakov Shalem, that Yaakov Avinu was Shalem. Because maybe what the Torah is trying to teach us is that people who have been wounded who have experienced pain or loss or tragedy, but then who have found the strength to prevail, vatuchal, that they are the most shalem. They are the most able to face the problems of life with strength and fortitude, even more than those whose lives have been comfortable without challenges or struggles which may sound strange because early on we learn to avoid pain. And yet, isn't it also true that HaKadosh Baruch Hu rewards us in direct proportion to the struggle we face? 
that lefumtzara agra, or as we say in the vernacular, no pain, no gain. And isn't it true that some of the strongest people we know are the people who face difficult times, whether as refugees or survivors, developing what psychologists refer to as grit and rising to heights that it's hard for the rest of us to achieve. And therefore, maybe when the Torah says that Yaakov arrived in Shechem, it didn't mean healed or perfect shalem, but at peace with himself, bishalom. In fact, maybe that's even the reason why it was Yaakov who arrived at Shechem and not his alter ego, the mighty and powerful Yisrael who overcame the angel. It was Yaakov who was wounded, but ready. For nearly a year, our lives have been turned upside down. So many things that we took from gra for granted, from simple gatherings to elaborate smachot, have been canceled because of a pandemic that has killed more than a quarter of a million people in this country and left our once daily routines turned upside down. No one in this country has not suffered to some degree. And while there is an end in sight, the greatest question that I am asked is will things go back to the way they once were? And my guess is that in many ways, life will soon return to normal. Not only because we are resilient, but because despite all of the tragedies and all of the changes, so much has stayed the same. As Simon Gronowski, a Holocaust survivor, said in a recent New York Times article, today, we can stay with our family or be helped by it. Keep in touch. We can do our shopping, stock up on our provisions, read the newspapers, watch television. But then, in the Shoah, we lived in terror. We lacked everything. We were cold, hungry, and our families were separated, dislocated. Compared to those tragic times, so much has stayed the same. And so we will come back to normal. And yet, if we do it right, we can come back to more than normal. We can come back stronger because of the wounds we've suffered, because we are more shalem, more appreciative of what we had, more caring of those in need, and more aware of our responsibilities to others. True, segments of our community and segments of our world have taken risks that have impacted us in ways we wish they never did. But we're poised to come out of this pandemic with greater strength and greater grit, with the opportunity to reimagine our lives and reshape them. Maybe it's because the structure of our shuls that we may have held on to were vestiges of a time when more pomp and pageantry were in vogue, and now it's no longer. And our smachot may have grown much too large, and now we know that true joy can be more intimate and less pretentious. And even our events and our shirim that were until recently limited by boundaries of space are now through technology shared around the world. We have suffered. And we as a nation are at this time limping along. There's no doubt about that. But if we learn from Yaakov, if we learn from him, we can transform the struggle of this past year into the shlemut of a stronger future. As the late Rabbi jo Lord Jonathan Sachs explained in his final book, Morality, it's at moments like this 
when we face an existential threat that humanity has been able to step back and view the world through a new lens, what he called the lens of we versus the lens of I. There is real light at the end of this tunnel. And the light is growing brighter every day, but that light will shine its greatest if the lesson of Yaakov's struggle and recovery is not viewed as a miraculous event as the Gemara suggests, but as a human event, a human event of fortitude, determination, strength, and the ability to emerge from tragedy even stronger than before. We can do it. We will do it because we are Shlemim. Each of us are stronger than we were before. Shabbat Shalom.